want to ask you a question. How many of you have ever been lost? Whether that was you know, driving and you just didn't know where you were. It's harder to get lost these days. We've got GPS, we've got Google Maps. There are still places where GPS and Google Maps don't work. And because we're so dependent on those things, oh man, it's, it, it's maybe even worse. We have less experience being lost. Um, I got lost one time. I was up in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan chasing waterfalls, even though you're not supposed to go chasing waterfalls. That's what I was doing. And, uh, and I'm walking down this path. And the path, it, it keeps getting smaller and smaller. And I think they call those rabbit trails. It turned into like, you know, and, and it turns out it was just a rabbit trail. It wasn't the actual path I was supposed to be on. And I still remember the moment where I was walking on the path. And then I was like, man, it, it could go any direction. Well, let me look back and see where I was. And then I'll know, you know, you can get a feel for what, where the path goes. And I look back and there's no path that way either. I'm, I'm in the woods, alone, didn't know where I was. And I, I somehow find my way back. But that, that feeling of looking back, I will never forget the sinking feeling of looking back and realizing I was not on the path that I thought I was on. I was lost. I want you to dream with me with this next question. Who is lost in your life? Who's lost right now? And I want you to imagine how they must feel like on the regular they think they're on a path, but then they look up and realize, this isn't the path. I'm lost. And maybe they don't realize it every day. Or, but you know, we've got friends who are lost. Isaiah said, we all, like sheep, have gone astray. This is what we do in our lives. We get lost. Who in your life has gotten off the path? Who needs to find Jesus so their life can change in the here and now, but also it can change for eternity. When I ask these questions, I hope that in your mind, you're seeing pictures. The Holy Spirit is prompting you to see family members, friends, co-workers, neighbors, children, classmates. We are surrounded by people who are lost. You ever think about, what's, what's the plan? How's God going to rescue that lost friend that you're picturing right now? You know, in Genesis chapter 15, God takes Abram at the time, soon would be Abraham. He takes him outside. He says, Abram, come on outside. I want you to look at the stars in the sky. I want you to see my dream for your life. This is how fruitful I'm going to make you. That's what God says to Abram. One man. Uh, I was in the Upper Peninsula, talking about the UP a lot. Um, I was up in the Upper Peninsula last month, and oh my goodness, the stars in the Upper Peninsula. It's incredible. If you've, I don't know if you've ever seen a shooting star, you pretty, you're almost guaranteed. They should put that like on the Mackinac Bridge. When you go across the bridge, you're going to see a shooting star at night. Because it, and it, it, there are, there's a lot of stars in the sky. Did you know that? You know, when we lived in downtown Lansing, and now we're in Hull, it's a little better, but it's not much better, we would joke, we'd be like, oh, it's a clear night. The star is out. <laughs> uh, because of all the pollution, it's not, it's, Lansing's awesome, it's not that polluted even. Uh, but, but, and really, there were maybe three stars you could count on. One of them is probably a planet, one's probably a satellite, one might actually be a star, I don't even know. Uh, but, you, you know, if, if you, you know the difference, if you go to a truly dark place at night, and look up, you're like, it's not even that dark out. There's so 
many stars. You can see the Milky Way. It's amazing. What's the plan for our lost friends? You know, there are different approaches that churches take to help people become followers of Jesus, to make disciples, to make an impact on the person that you pictured, the people you pictured. How are we going to make an impact? There's different ways. A church can have one star or maybe a few stars, like the Lansing, downtown Lansing night sky, And that would be like where a few people in the church can teach the gospel and help change people's lives. A church can do that, or a church can be full of bright, shining lights. A church can have everyone in the church able to share the light that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know what? We've always opted for option number two there, haven't we? We are the church. That's the harder way. It would be easier. It would be easier for you if everybody just kind of sat back and you let me and the staff or a handful of people who lead fulfill the Great Commission. When Jesus said, go and make disciples of all nations, He wasn't just, he was just talking to a few people, right? No, he was talking to all of his disciples. He was talking to all of us. It'd be so much easier if it was just a few of us. But that's not what Jesus wanted. He wanted everyone who's a follower of him to help make followers of him. Disciples make disciples. And so we've got some learning to do. But the awesome thing is the word disciple means learner. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to learn how to help people. And that's my job is not to help everybody become a Christian. My job is to help you so you can help people become Christians. And I take that part of my job very seriously. The next three sermons, we're going to go through the meat of our Go With God Bible study series. You hear those words every single Sunday. And there's a free copy in the back uh, for you to to pick up. I would love it if you would right now take out your phone and go to gowithgod.org. And we'll we'll use that in a moment here. Uh, Because the booklet coincides with a web app. And the goal of this is so that anybody, everybody, you can hand your friend a booklet. You can ask them to go to gowithgod.org and get started. It's really easy to get started. You can probably see it right now. There's a big button that says Start the Journey. And if you miss that button, there's another one just a little little bit down that also says Start the Journey. You're like, where do I start? I can't figure it out. Hit that button, okay? (laughs) And then you're going to see that there are five weeks to these Bible studies. It may take somebody longer than a week to do it. That's okay. Uh, But you could do it in a week. They could do it in a week. And we're going to actually start with week two. I sent out some videos this week uh, that cover why we do this and what week one is all about. That's the starting point study. But we're going to be in week two, Authentic Discipleship. So you can go ahead and hit that button, Authentic Discipleship, and you can follow along that way if you want. If you want to just pay attention, that's fine uh, as well. Um, The goal is that disciples, learners, you guys, disciples of Jesus, You can help somebody become a disciple of Jesus. I believe in the gospel, and I believe in every single one of you that you can do this. And this is a resource that can help you. The gospel has the power of salvation. This is a resource that helps people share the gospel and learn the gospel. Amen? Um, All right. I'll say that. I'll say this is a resource that's helpful. That's all it is. It's not the gospel, but it is helpful. Amen? And then there's, there's another thing here, too. People don't become Christians because they did a Bible study. Okay, It takes more than that. And so what I've seen in over 20 years of ministry is that it actually takes three things to help somebody become a Christian. And you can think about how you became a Christian, and I think you'll agree with these three things. It takes three things. It takes, one, a person needs to fall in love with God. You don't fall in love with God. You're not going to be a Christian. You're not going to follow Jesus. Following Jesus is really hard. You've got to love God. Does any of us have the power to make somebody fall in love with God? Nope. 
but we can help. And there are things in the Go With God study series that you can do to help your friend fall in love with God. They've got to fall in love with God. Num- number two, they need to fall in love with God's church. It's, there's, no one goes it alone. Nobody becomes a Christian alone. Nobody stays a Christian alone. They have to fall in love with the church. Can you make somebody fall in love with your church? Nope, you can't do that. But you can help them by inviting them uh, to, to church, uh, by including them in things like this Wednesday night. That's for everybody. That's Everybody can come to our house on Wednesday nights and just experience the glory of some awesome Christian fellowship. Okay, um, But people need to fall in love with the church. And then third, people need to believe the gospel and respond to the gospel in a saving way, with saving faith. And that's where the Bible study series especially helps. But So, so what we're focusing on is really just one-third of what it takes to, for someone to truly be converted to Jesus Christ. Amen? All right, let's look at how, um, how this works. Uh, I want you to imagine again, so those, the, the people you pictured, your friends, your loved ones, people you care about, people you know that are lost, you ask them, hey, would you be willing to study the Bible with me? And you were, so, you were like, oh, I'm so nervous. This is going to ruin this relationship. What's going to happen? But then they were like, sure, let's do it. Yeah. What? Really? Okay. What do you do? And so you hand them the book or you send them to the website or you, they come to church, whatever it is. Um, how this works is all you're doing, and you can do this, is having a great conversation about God and his word. That's what a Bible study is. Have a conversation about God and his word. And so if you have the booklet or you're on the, the app, you, you're in a great place if you're on the app, but you can turn to page 20. Uh, look, at that's what it looks like to have a Bible study. Doesn't it look good? The coffee looks good, I'll tell you that. Um, we, uh, uh, the, the study actually is on page 20, and you just follow when you, when you actually meet up with your person. They've already studied it out. That gives people a chance to study the Word of God on their own. We're not, like, manipulating people. They get, they get to study it on their own. And then they come ready to talk about what they learned. And you just have a conversation about that. And so page 20, it says, to review what you learned, which is what we're going to do right now, and especially pay attention to the things in boxes. And you can see there that there are some things in boxes. And so... Uh, so, you, you know, ask them some questions, a little small talk. Hey, how was your week? What did you think about the Bible studies? What did you learn? And then say a prayer and then get into the conversation and go through these scriptures. Um, what's really cool about them studying on their own and then you meeting up to talk about it is you don't have to, um, like, check every little box. They've already studied it out. What you get to do is focus on a few things that as you studied it out too, because they're studying it, you're studying it, so you're ready to meet and have a good conversation. Focus on a few things that you were really passionate about. You were like, oh, this is something. I, I really believe this. I want to teach this to my friend. And, you can, and, and that's the thing that they're going to remember. When you think back to when you did Bible studies and you became a Christian, you probably remember not all of the things, not every single point, but you remember a few things that were shared passionately, that were shared with conviction. That's what really sticks and resonates with people. Okay, so the first uh, scripture is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 and 13. And they'll have gone through it on the web app. They'll hopefully come with notes. People take notes right in the, in the booklet. It's a journal. It's a field guide. And so we'll read Hebrews 4, 12 and 13. Um, and it's in the ESV. It says, for the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Okay, and so this is the first scripture in this, in this Bible study. Read it together. You don't have to read every single scripture as you go through, but again, the things you're really passionate about. They'll have read this on their own, and you're going to have a discussion about each one. So you read this passage, and here's what I've seen people do. It's like you, you know all the right answers, and you're trying to help 
your friend get all the answers right. Like you're like a math tutor or something. You're like, oh, no, 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 no. Here's the right answer. It's like there's going to be a test with a scantron. And did, you didn't bring a number two pencil? What's going on? Uh, that is not how we're studying the Bible with people. This is not math tutoring or Bible tutoring. This is about people's minds and their hearts. It's not about getting all the questions right on the exam. The final exam, which this passage talks about, is meeting God and giving an account for your life. And so you want to think about, I'm setting people up for that. It's not going to be like, okay, here's your, the Holy Spirit's like, here's your test. Remember, it's, I wrote a book. It's open book, but here you go. Hope, hope your Bible study partner covered all the bases. That's not what this is about, okay? Um, it's, you know, uh, Genevieve just did driver's ed. She's, she's dri- just in case you're like, is it safe to go home today? No, wait, you go home first. We'll wait around a little bit, and then it'll be safer, okay? She's, she's doing great. Um, but she took driver's ed. Do you think she cared at all? about what the driver's ed teacher was teaching? Or do you think she just wanted to get to pass the test so she could get a permit? Absolutely, 100%, number two. She, she just wanted to pass. That's all. Uh, and she did, and so she's driving. Uh, but that, that is not the approach that we're taking to these Bible studies. And so what happens, the, the two different approaches here with this is this, this passage, Hebrews 12 and 13, talks about the Word of God being living and active. But if you, if you come in like a math tutor or like a driver's ed teacher, you're going to be like, okay, so it says that the Word of God is living and active. What do you think that means? And then they're going to be like, oh, well, I think that the, 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 and like, oh, that's very good. There's this one other point I want to make sure you understand with this living and active thing, and that's that, you know, it's like alive, and that means it's relevant. And what? What is that? Like, no! The Word of God is living. It's alive. You are holding a book that is alive. It's active. We, we kill it on the very first scripture sometimes where it says it's living and active. We make it a dead Bible study. Please don't do that. Uh, it, says, it says it's living and active, and then it says it's a sword. Do you know what swords do? We like to think that swords are like pokey things. Have you ever watched a movie with people fighting with swords? Things are getting chopped off of those people. That's what swords do. That's what this passage says. And so you keep like, well, it's like a it's like a sword. It's got two edges, and on the one edge, no, like you like you can hit. No, don't hit the person. But it it's a sword. Like how are you gonna teach the Bible studies? And and totally miss what this passage is actually saying. Okay, and you can apply that to every single one of these passages. You see what I mean by like. Pick something you're passionate about and share with your friend. Hey, I want you to know, friend of mine who's studying the Bible, who I love, I want you to know the Bible is a sword. It's going to cut you up if you put it in your life. Are you willing to be cut up by, the, by a book, by the Word of God? And they're going to be like, yeah, I want to get cut up. Do you see the difference? You're not a Bible tutor. You're teaching the gospel. Amen? All right, the next verse. Uh, As we go there, let me get my control back there, Craig. Thank you, sir. Uh, 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. We don't have time to go through all these, but your homework this week, which we'll look at, is to go through all these passages. If you've never filled out the Go With God Bible study booklet yourself, that's your homework the next three weeks, is is to read through it and fill it out. You, If you have a filled out Go With God Bible study booklet, you will be able to study the Bible with your friend. Your friend who's lost, who needs to hear the gospel. That's why we're going over this. Amen? 2 Timothy 3.16 talks about um, how, let me get there in my notes. Uh, It talks about that all scripture is God-breathed. All scripture is God-breathed. And what I, I like to ask people, do you believe that? Do you believe that this book was actually written through people by the Holy Spirit and it's, it's inspired? That's what it means to be God, God-breathed. It's inspired by the Holy Spirit. And most people, if they're doing a Bible study with you, you know what they say? They say, yeah, I do. I'm here doing a Bible study. Of course I believe that. But then, and you could leave it there. You could be like, okay, cool. Let's move on. Or you could ask one more question. You could say, why? Why do you believe? 
that this book is actually from God. And then they're going to be like, <laughs> and I'll ask you that question. Do you, you're at church right now. You believe this is the word of God. Why? Why do you believe that this book is from the creator of the universe and the savior of your soul? You need to be able to answer that question when you come to this Bible study. Okay? Um, that's, te- that's your testimony. And so they might, you know, people will say things, well, I've, I've studied the documents and the historicity of it, and like, okay, that's all good. That's a good answer. They might say, well, I've, you know, I've seen it in my life. When I follow the Bible, the things the Bible says will happen, they happen. And you know what? When I don't follow the Bible, the things the Bible says will happen, they happen. <laughs> uh, you know, there's a lot of reasons why. And you can have, everyone's going to have a little bit different answer to why you believe the, the Bible is God-breathed. But the important thing is, you got to have an answer. And so that's a great conversation to have in this passage. Amen? John 8, uh, we'll skip uh, 2 Timothy 4, 16. And we'll look at uh, John 8. If you guys want to turn there, John 8, 30 through 32. You guys with me here? Come on. John 8, verse 3. Um, and I usually give a little explanation. I think actually in the, in, the, uh, in the web app right there, it explains why it's okay to skip over the, the headings. Those are just put there by the publisher. publisher. They're helpful. They're great. They're not bad, but they're not part of the Bible. And so we're going to skip right over the heading between verse 30 and verse 31. It says, as he was saying these things, that's Jesus, many believed in him. So Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. That is one of the most famous verses in all the Bible, and for good reason. What this does is this ties the word of God, which is the first part of the study, to discipleship, being a follower of God. And if, uh, you know, we've gone through lots of different versions of these Bible studies, and those, uh, in some cases, are different studies. Word of God is a study, then you meet up a a week later and you do a study about discipleship. We got it all combined. Next week, we're putting four studies together. Get ready for that. Bring your seatbelts with you. Uh, there's a lot to go over. It's going to be awesome. Uh, but but this, this is why. There's a connection. It says, he says, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. Followers of Jesus, disciples, follow the word of God. Earlier in John, at the very beginning of John, Jesus is the word. He is the word. Um, and so what we're talking about here is that the Bible's standard, when you're sharing with your friend, the, the Bible standard is beyond belief. And what I mean by that is it's beyond mere belief. So many people, so in, in our society, in the Lansing area, most of the people that you're going to do Bible studies with already believe that they're Christians. Some of those people really are Christians, and that's awesome. But a lot of them are, they think that they're Christians, but they're not. And that's, Jesus, is, he's talking to a group of people here. It says that many believed in him. They believed in Jesus. But he turned to them and said, you got to actually follow my word if you're going to be my disciple. That's what these Bible studies are doing. They're trying to help people see, are you really following Jesus? Here's what that looks like. So many Christians have Santa Claus faith. You know Santa Claus. We love Santa Claus. What's not to love about Santa Claus? If I believe in Santa Claus, that he's in the North Pole, and, I, and he's got his elves and they're making toys, if I really believe in Santa Claus, this is the plot of every Chris, Christian or Christmas movie, um, and, I, and I do my best to stay off the naughty list, if I'm really nice, then I will get presents on Jesus' birthday. That's... That's, the, that's what Santa Claus believed. That's what our kids, we were like, do we tell the kids about Santa Claus? Do we tell the, it's a big, it's a big thing. We have like counseling appointments. What are you going to do about Santa Claus? I don't know. But then there's the Easter Bunny and the two, what do we do? Okay. A lot of people's faith in Jesus hasn't evolved much past believing in Santa Claus. The names and the places are just different. I believe that God is up in heaven. And he's making blessings for me. And if I do my best to stay off the naughty list, and I'm really nice, 
then I get to go to heaven on Jesus' return day. That's what people believe. That's Santa Claus faith. That's easy believism. Call it what you want. But true belief means, this shouldn't be mind-blowing, but it is, actually following Jesus. (laughs) Doing what he said. And a lot of people at this point, and as you go through the next studies in the discipleship part of this, they, they'll throw their hands up, well, I can't do that. You're expecting me to be perfect. That's actually a defense mechanism called fatalism. Not that they're purposefully being defensive, but that's what we do. It's called fatalism. It's like, well, if, I, if I'm expected to be perfect, then why am I even going to try? And this is really important because we are not expecting people to be perfect. None of us has had even a perfect day today already, and it's still morning time, right? Um, we're not expecting perfection. And Jesus is not saying, you have to perfectly follow me to be my disciple. What we are expecting is devotion. Not perfection, but devotion. Are you devoted to Jesus and his word? Are you devoted to being a disciple? Remember what the word disciple means? It means learner and student. Learner and student and perfect don't go together. If you are a learner... If you're devoted to learning, you're admitting you're not perfect. If you say you're perfect, you have nothing more to learn, you're actually not a learner anymore. You're not a student. You're not a disciple. Okay, let's look at Mark chapter 1, verse 14. And I want, as I'm going through this, this is, I'm preaching this, but I want you to imagine teaching this to somebody because you can do this. You can teach these scriptures These resources will help you so much, you can do this. But you can learn this, you can have these resources if you never ask anybody. If you never believe, okay, I can do this, my church is going to help me, my lost friend needs this. If you never actually say anything, if you never ask the question, the person you've been praying for, if you never open your mouth, how can they be saved if they haven't heard? We've got to do this, amen? Mark 1, verse 14. This is how Jesus begins opening his mouth and sharing his faith. It says, Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing alongside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were with him, mending the nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. So what's the big point here? What You you could break down every single verse of this passage. Jesus says, believe in the gospel. Next Sunday, we're going to teach the gospel. What does it mean to believe in the gospel? You will know after next Sunday if you're not totally sure right now. Uh, but then he calls these guys, and, and the point here that I love to make is that becoming a disciple of Jesus changes everything. They were fishermen. Their parents were fishermen. They lived in a fishing village. They smelled like fish all the time. Fish were their life. They were on the sea, the Sea of Galilee, many, many fish, nets, the song, all that stuff, okay? They were doing, they were doing fishing. But Jesus calls them. And he says, now you're going to be fishers of men. Totally changes the purpose and mission of their lives. He calls James and John, their dad. They're like, hey, we're fixing the nets. Why are they mending the nets? So they can go do more fishing. And then they're like, they drop the nets. See you, dad. Good luck with the fishing business. We're going with Jesus. We're going to do his business. This, it changes everything. Like I want, and I'll say this when I study the Bible, I'll be like, okay, imagine, you know, we take a break here, you go and get a refill of coffee, and Jesus is there. Instead of me studying the Bible with you, Jesus is like, hey, these Bible studies are awesome, love it, cool church, you're doing the right thing, and he grabs you by the shoulders and he says, I want you to follow me. Do you come back to the Bible study, you sit down and you're like, hey, I just met Jesus. Pretty cool. All right, what's next? Let's, let's keep going. 
No, you come back and you're like, I met Jesus. Jesus asked me to follow him. You come on, you gotta, he, he might still be there. Let's, you gotta meet Jesus too. We're not helping people check off the right answers of a Bible study. We are introducing them to Jesus. And when a person meets Jesus, their whole life changes. And if a person says, I love Jesus, I'm a Christian, but their life is still the same, they have not met Jesus. This is what we're helping people do. There's another way to put this. There's no such thing as a Christian who's not on the mission. And I want to look at you guys and say these words again. Brothers and sisters, there's no such thing as a Christian who's not on the mission. Matthew chapter 28 is the next verse. So we go from, or actually, yep, talks about what, what a disciple is. Mark 1. And then when we go to Matthew 28, Mark 1's the very beginning of Jesus' ministry. He's like, come on, we fishers of men. Matthew 28, he has died. He's rose from the dead. He's about to go up to heaven. And what does he say? He says, he says go and make disciples of all nations. You can flip one ahead for me um, when you get a chance, Craig. Thank you. Uh, and then, we, and then the, the Bible study moves to these two passages in Luke. Luke chapter 9 and Luke chapter 14. And, and the important things, we won't look at these, but the important Thing, the most important thing about these two passages are two little words. If anyone. Who is Jesus talking to if he says if anyone? He's talking to everyone. This is a universal standard. And he says, if anyone would come after me, if you want to be a disciple of Jesus, if you want to be my follower, and then he says, you want to be a follower of me, Make sure you come to church a couple times a month. So you, you do that, then you move on. No, that's not what it says. It says make sure you occasionally read the Bible, or at least dust it off so it looks like you read the Bible. No, he's, if anyone would come after me, he must, it says, deny himself, take up the cross daily, and follow me. And then in Luke 14, it says, if anyone must come after me, he must hate his father, his mother, his wife, his children, his brother, his sister, even his own life. He's like, you got to love me this much more than anything else. A close second. If you've got competing loves with the love of God, it's not going to work. And then he repeats, follow me. Take up your cross. Taking up your cross, the cro we have like, you know, we wear cross necklaces, nothing wrong with that, beautiful cross tattoos, all that stuff. That would be like, if you, ha if you had a friend who wore a, an electric chair necklace or had like an electric chair and lethal injection like on his shoulders. That's what the cross was. It was a, a brutal public execution. That's, and so when Jesus looked at his disciples and said, hey guys, if you want to follow me, you got to take up your cross every day. You've got to be willing to be publicly executed on a daily basis. That's what the cross means. That's what taking up your cross every day means. Are you willing to follow me no matter what on the daily? That's a, that's a hard following. And, but here's the thing. If anyone, this is the basics of what it means to be a follower of Jesus. And we live in a place where we, we, our lives are not threatened because of Christianity on the regular. And praise God for that. You know, one of the things that... Um, I think, you know, you study this stuff. And even right now, who's feeling a little convicted about, this is like our basic Bible study. And we're like, like oh, okay. Uh, this is what it does. This is another reason to share your faith. If, if you need another reason to share your faith, is because when I'm studying the Bible with somebody, I act better. Like, you're like, oh, and, you know, I'm bringing people to church. I'm like, oh, I got I to gotta really, like, give it my best here. I got a friend studying the Bible. And that's like when, I'm, uh, when I go for runs, I could be, like, dying and like, I'm like, but someone is running past me, and I'm like, I pick it up, and I'm like, hello, and then they get out of, uh, you know, they get past my vision, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad they're gone. Like, but that's what we do with the Bible studies. Like, when you're not studying the Bible with somebody, you're like, yeah, Jesus is awesome. You, you get a friend studying the Bible, you're like, Jesus is awesome. And you're, you're, you're at your best. You want to shine. It, 
Studying the Bible with people helps us to examine our own walk with God. That's why it's so good to do it regularly. Amen? Jesus ends, we talked for the last six weeks about love in John uh, 13 through 17. So I'm not going to hit on this, but, but he says, hey, how do you know someone's really follow, follows us? They're going to love sacrificially. Um, and so, um, after, so after you go through this um, with your friends, let me get a chance, Craig, you're doing awesome. Thank you, brother. Um, is, uh, they, you know, on the app, they're like, you did it. Good job. Um, you're going to meet up with your friend. They've gone through this stuff. You're meeting up. We talked about what the meetup conversation could, could look like. Um, but then after you've gone over the Bible, which is what we just did, and you can do that however you want to do that. Um, after, after that, the, on page 20 of the booklet, it prompts you to have a discussion with these questions. And I think this is really where you, through the power, the power of God and what he's done in your life, you get to affect somebody so deeply. And so this is your homework. I want you to know, I want you to go through the booklet, go through what we just studied, use the web app, okay? Um, and I want you to think through these questions that are on page 20. How did you become a Christian? And imagine you, you're answering this for somebody that you're studying with. How did you become a Christian? And you get to tell them about how somebody invited you to church or, you know, you were at your lowest and then God came and helped you. Whatever your story is, but you should know your story in a few sentences. What did you have to give up? That's powerful to share because people who are doing this study for the first time are like, that Jesus expects that? I thought Jesus was like Santa Claus. What is going on? I thought Jesus was just open arms no matter what. And Jesus is like, well, no, there's, the arms are open on a cross. It's grace, but it's also we got to deal with some stuff in our lives. And so you tell, you know, hey, here's what I had to give up. That's powerful. Talk about, hey, here's something, you know, when I was doing these Bible studies, I thought this I don't even know why I thought this, but I was off, and it was so helpful to actually look at what the Bible says. And then here's how different my life is now. Here's, you know, here's what I was doing. Here's how I was living. This is the path that I was on. I was lost, and now I'm found. And this is what it looks like to be found. It's totally worth it. You can tell them why. You're going to be so encouraged by answering these questions. But even more than that, you're going to get a chance at some point Share your faith to tell somebody the answers to these questions. But you've got to know. Amen? We'll close with this. This is more than just a Sunday where we're teaching about Bible studies. It's more than just a sermon about how to do a Bible study with somebody. Jesus said that he is the way, he's the truth, and he's the life. We have to decide, church, if we're going to be a church that teaches authentic discipleship or if we'll be a church full of authentic disciples. There's a difference. I'm committed to teaching authentic discipleship. But will we be a church full of authentic disciples? That's up to each of us. The difference is you. Will you live this yourself? Will you teach it to others? Will the truth be something that we believe or will the truth be our way of life? Will you watch me and a few others help people find Jesus? Or will you yourself participate in what I think is the most amazing thing about being a Christian, you get to help somebody respond to the gospel and become saved. It's not, this isn't just a good idea or a technique or like a neat little web app. I want you to picture that friend, that family member that God placed on your heart at the beginning of this message. You are the star in their sky. Maybe the only one when they look up. You've got the Holy Spirit. You've got the Word of God. You've got the church family. You've even got this Bible study resource. Go with God. 
And for that friend, for that soul, you probably can't even imagine the extent of the darkness. We hide the darkness. You are the star in their sky. Will you shine? Jesus had a moment in the Garden of Gethsemane where it was dark. He was hurting. And he had to decide when he prayed to God, your will be done, not my will be done. He had to decide. We say, well, he had to decide to go to the cross. You know what he really decided there? Would he share his faith and his salvation with us? And I know it's hard. I know I'm asking a lot when I say, go ahead and ask your friend, will you study the Bible with me? Text them, GoWithGod.org. It seems like a little thing, but I know it's a big thing. Jesus prayed on his knees three times. Take this cup. It's too hard. He went to the cross so that we could be saved. Brothers and sisters, let's go with God. Let's be the lights that Lansing, our friends, our relationships need. Amen. Let's pray and we'll take communion. Lord, uh, we thank you so much for Jesus Christ. We could not talk about this. We could have no hope. There would be no stars in our sky if he didn't decide to go through with your plan, which was for him to take our sins to the cross, for him to take death, to experience death, uh, so that he could overcome sin and overcome death and rise again. Lord, what an amazing plan and, and now we get to be a part of that plan. We get to see people who are lost, who are dead. We get to see them be found and come to life uh, because of Jesus. I pray for us to have boldness. I pray that this message could give us inspiration and hope, that we could dream for our friends and family, and that we could ask them to study the Bible so that they can experience just how amazing it is to have that hard-fought salvation in our lives. We praise you for it as we take the body and the blood right now. In Jesus' name.